Hi there, this is going to be a quick screencast on how you can use Google SketchUp as a different way to make an online or actually just a virtual uh, gingerbread house. This is a little bit of a complicated program so I would definitely recommend playing around with it for a few minutes before you attempt doing this with students um, and if you're not comfortable with it uh, there'll be some other options on the MindWing blog that you can use to make uh, gingerbread houses. First of all, you would need to go to sketchup.google.com and download Google SketchUp, which is free. And then what we're going to do is uh, you're going to use the link in the blog post and you're going to download a 3D model that can be used to make a gingerbread house. Last year, actually, gingerbread uh, Google made a gingerbread house contest. They offered a contest and allowed people to make gingerbread houses. You can make something like that there. Um, it's a pretty simple model. And you'll click on the blog, on Mindwing blog, where it says download a blank gingerbread house. You'll see that on the Mindwing blog. And what you're going to do is click download model. And you can do it as Google SketchUp 7, even though what's available is 8. It's Google SketchUp 8. So I downloaded that. And I can just double click on it in my downloads model and it brings up the Google SketchUp file that's going to show you step by step how to make the gingerbread house. So it says click on step one to get started. And first of all you can use the scale tool as it said to shape your house. You press S on the keyboard which activates the scale tool and when you click on the model you can make your house taller or wider. And those are some things you can do uh, just to get started. Just to point out what the Google SketchUp toolbar looks like, um, these are tools that help you move around your model. There's first of all the orbit tool. So when I click and drag, I can orbit and see that this is really a 3D gingerbread house. You can also use the hand, and the hand moves you in different directions. The magnifying glass allows you to zoom in or zoom out. Okay, but I'm going to click on step two because I'm happy with step one. It says go get some decorations. Following the directions we go window, components, and what they have available is under gingerbread 2009. So if you type this in the search bar you're going to get some houses that people actually uploaded to Google and also some things you could put on the house. Um, there's only a couple of things. There's the pinwheel mint, uh, there's the hooked candy cane, there's gumdrops, and there's wafers, um, and the candy stripe hole. So the way you put it into the model is you'll click on the item itself, And then when we go into SketchUp, it's going to allow you to place it right on the model. So it's helpful when you move it to the point where it says like it does there, on edge in component. That shows you that it's actually right on the edge of the item or the roof. Okay, so we've got wafers there. Cool. If I want to do another set of wafers, I can simply drag it until it says on face and component. I guess it's the same as on edge. All right, and now you've got a roof. If we want to go around to the other side, and I'm a little too zoomed in, so I'm going to zoom out a bit. I can also use the gumdrops if I'd like. and drag the gum drops up to the edge and drop them off. Okay, if you want to move anything, you can click on the move tool. That's the house itself. 
it thinks I want to move the house right now, so I'm going to select the gumdrops. Select the move tool and you would be able to move them. Okay, so it's a little complicated, but based on what we're doing here, um, it's only a couple of steps. You can put in the candy stripe hole, you can do other things like that. The other thing that I want to talk about and what it has to do with um, Mindwing tools this holiday season is that you have all this free space around your gingerbread house. So maybe this would be an interesting way to explore setting. And you can put the gingerbread house in any setting that you'd like by downloading other 3D models. The way you can do that is you go to File and 3D Warehouse, Get Models. Okay, let's say we wanted to put the, the house in the forest. I'm going to look up forest. And the way the model um, warehouse works is you have some sort of composite models like this, which would be a house and all those trees. Or you can just simply download trees. Let's see if I can find a good forest. I like this little composite model right here. So I'm going to click on that so I can view it. Same way I downloaded the house. I'm going to load it directly into the model. Now this is a large object. So it's going to take a minute to load. And it's also a little bit more complicated to place, but we'll be able to do it without much trouble. So before you do the setting, or before you actually create the setting in Google SketchUp, maybe you'd want to do a setting map and describe all of the things that are inherent to that setting to work on descriptive skills, associating, and really getting to know the setting and using the setting icon uh, would be great things that you would do um, before you go to look on the 3G warehouse to create the setting. So I'm now going to go into Google SketchUp, all right, and we can see that my setting is kind of moving around with my cursor. And when you click it, it will place for you. So it's now located there. Sorry, it's flying around on me. Okay, when I click go get the cursor, then it won't move anymore. I'm going to just orbit a little bit so I can see whether the forest actually went where I thought it did, which it did. It's right on the face here of the snow. Now to make it not blue anymore, I just simply have to deselect it. And I can fly over it. Okay, and I can see the forest. And again, you want to play with the zooming in and out. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Okay. So I can see my gingerbread house is in the forest, and maybe I'd even want to get something else that would go with the forest, like a bear. Not a polar bear or a teddy bear, but a bear. I said load it directly. I didn't say okay the first time. So this one's going to load for me. I'm going back to Google SketchUp. As I move my cursor around, there's the bear. So I can put him right there in the woods on the hill. So he's now there. His foot's kind of in the grass a little bit, but that's okay. And as I hover around him, let's move the components window away. I can see that my woods now has a bear. 
So as I said, it's a little bit complicated to use Google SketchUp, but I think it has a lot of potential for language therapy um, in terms of what you can add and the engagement of the kids and being able to interact with a, a 3D model of something. Um, I almost kind of want to go play in this little area. It's like Playmobil, but virtual. Um, so you could bring in your gingerbread house, do the decoration in one session, and then think about just bringing in a couple of other models to um, make the activity engaging and use a setting map as well. So hopefully that is helpful to you and an interesting idea. If you want something simpler, check out the links on the Mindwing blog for um, easy to access web-based gingerbread houses. Hope you enjoy. Again, you don't necessarily have to um, do this last step of uploading your model to the 3D warehouse, but you can try that if you'd like. Good luck. Thanks a lot.